I want to mel welcome uh, Christoph Web 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 Weber and Nicolas Eckhal from Vienna. Their talk is called, uh, let's see if I can pronounce this right, Schade das Beton nicht brennt. That's more like Yiddish than German. Pity concrete doesn't burn. Um, Christoph and Nicolas are um, sculptors that work with um, concrete with beton. And um, let's hear what they have to say. Hello, and thanks for having us. Uh, my name is Christoph Weber, this is Nicolas Eckert. Um, we both uh, live in Vienna, and uh, at the moment we should have been in uh, Jerusalem at the uh, ArtCube Artist Studios in residence with a, a collaborative project, which I will talk about in a second, but let me start our screen. Can you see it full screen? We see it, yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, so um, let me manage my own screen <laughs> so I can read everything. So we both work with concrete in a kind of opposite way, as you can see there. Um, and uh, we teamed up because we um, both work against concrete. We work with concrete, about concrete and against concrete. And um, I started out with uh, working uh, about the conflict and uh, geopolitical conflict, vertical barriers, also about the horizontal barriers concrete is, uh, is representing. And uh, more recently we uh, uh, design research projects about the climate and uh, biodiversity crisis caused by concrete. And um, let's start uh, by explaining this title, Schade das Beton nicht brennt, Pity, Concrete Doesn't Burn. It, it derives from a German punk song from the late 80s by a group called uh, Quetschen Power. And uh, it's really about the, the whole uh, scene of uh, squatted houses in, in West Germany and in Berlin, in West Berlin. And uh, so in the, in the late 80s and since the 50s actually, concrete was um, always the perfect uh, cultural antagonist. And uh, both Nicolas and me, we, we made uh, sculptures with burnt wood um, before we met each other. But we did it in a kind of opposite way as well as we work in opposite styles. And I uh, um, burnt away the formwork after it has already cured. And uh, Nicolaus um, burns the formwork. So it looks a bit like coal and then he pours the concrete. And so you see the imprint looks a bit different or quite different actually. Um, and um, since 2017, we uh, developed artistic research projects together that confront um, similar, so we confront similar topics that are very much related to the crisis concrete represents or uh, uh, causes. And um, the first one should uh, or will start right now. We, we, we are, call it in concrete stones. It's about the relation between stone and concrete in Israel. And um, so uh, we built a network and uh, asked uh, Israeli artists to, Israeli and Palestinian artists to help us understand uh, the, the, the conflict and the relation between concrete and stone, especially in Jerusalem. And uh, this is Avner Pinchover. Um, Hanan Abu Sain and um, Rakadi Zaides. And, and the two of us, we hope to continue our project in, in spring. And the second project is about greenwashed, con green washing concrete or greenwashed concrete. 
which will uh, hopefully start uh, the funding will hopefully start in a couple of weeks and then we can we can tackle this issue and because um, I think the uh, vertical barriers caused by concrete is very well known in Israel we uh, we concentrate on the climate uh, aspects here in the next couple of slides and uh, let's go yeah um, so um, when talking about concrete and, and the use of concrete um, there it could be said that there are two significant moments in, in the history one is the promise like the the chakra of Athens from 1933 in which famous architects like Gropius or um, Le Corbusier met and discussed their ideas of, of architecture, uh, which is still very, very, um, very, very much influencing um, the way in how our cities are built. And the second moment is, is actually the, the speech of, of Khrushchev uh, in 1954. It, he, he made a, a speech in front of the party, which lasted like three hours and was only about concrete. And, and what an incredible great material it is to, to build up um, the revolutionary Soviet society. Um, and today, today, it is, um, today concrete is the second most often used material right after water, um, which, which has tremendous effects on the globe, of course. Um, and though the promises of modernism, which were um, hygiene, housing, and mobility improvements, um, they also caused severe effects like the sealing of the soils, the carbon emission from cement production, fresh water consumption, toxic dusts, overheated cities, and the creation of massive and horizontal and vertical barriers. Um, yes, that's what we'll talk a bit about. Um, so today it is very obvious that the, the use and the production of, of today's concrete will lead to significant challenges for generations to come, which is, yeah, uh, Christoph. <laughs> yes, I, I will, I will uh, talk a bit about uh, the causes of this uh, climate impact, uh, environmental impact. It's uh, concrete, every, every component of, of concrete really is very, has troublesome effects on the globe. Um, the cement production to start with, it's 15% of concrete is cement and the cement production um, makes 8% of global CO2 emissions. So it would be the third biggest country after the China and the United States uh, is just from the cement production. Um, and uh, to understand why this is about half of, of the CO2 is because of the heat necessary to, to burn the limestone uh, powder, that's 1450 degrees Celsius, and the other half, and this can be, this can be improved a bit by not burning oil, but um, you still have to create heat, which will always create CO2. Well, and the other half, it, it, it can barely be reduced because it is a chemical reaction that happens when you, when you heat the Ca, CO through the calcium carbonate because it results in CaO, uh, which is in the cement, and CO2, which has to go somewhere. And um, the next problem is the fresh water consumption, the, the water withdrawal. Concrete is responsible for 1.7% of global water withdrawal. And uh, sand is a really huge problem uh, because it is not regrowing, but a limited resource. And we have used all of it, actually, at least all of the easily available sand um, and gravel. I just call it sand for now, but all the stone ingredients in concrete um, we used basically, and uh, it's very hard now to, to, to come to sand. The biggest crime organization in India, for example, is the sand mafia. Then um, um, we are now uh, grabbing the sand 
uh, from ocean uh, floors and uh, so the beaches are are vanishing. I'm sure you have heard of that, um, but uh, yeah, I think that's the that's the the details and the whole abundance. And Nicholas, I think you will say yeah. something. Uh, like some, some just to add something to the sand that uh, that's uh, something that many people don't know that the, the desert sand it, it's not um, it's not possible to use desert sand for concrete, especially for, I mean not for high quality concrete as you would need it for skyscrapers, for example, which are yeah, which are built in desert areas. Um, yes, actually for the uh, Burj Khalifa, all the sand had to be imported from yes. Australia, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they ship it and then they then they do it by cars actually with um, trucks. Okay, um, so the abandons, the abandons of concrete, it's incredible high. It's like 27 billion tons um, growing each year, like every year that's that's approximately twice the global river sediment flux reaching the ocean. Um, so in the, in the science, concrete is, is already discussed as the marking material of the Anthropocene. So, which is the, yeah, you know, I guess you all know the Anthropocene, the, the new global age probably, probably existing. Um, there's, um, there's an interesting graph on the, um, growing amount of concrete, the global growing amount of concrete, you see the incredible rise after the Second World War. Um, and, it's, and it's still rising. Um, that's also a very strong argument against um, building industry, which always claims that they're reducing the cement, the CO2 emission in the production of cement which is true, like in Austria, they reduced something about 20% of the CO2, which gets emitted um, in the burning process. Um, but in the same time, the, um, the abundance of the rock itself and the use of concrete, it's rising still. So it doesn't really have a, a big effect. Um, yeah. yeah. Now we want to, uh, show very briefly how we uh, each of us works individually and then uh, collaboratively and, 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 and how we plan to uh, work in the future. So I started out uh, breaking concrete uh, because I saw a picture of a destroyed Palestinian building. It was, uh, this work is from 2004. Uh, and uh, it was a Israeli uh, revenge attack for a Palestinian suicide attack. And so there was a Palestinian building destroyed completely and the concrete rubble I thought was the biggest symbol of violence. And I, I made this media critical work for me, it's called Untitled Chunks and I, I cast one block of concrete, had it broken by a big machine and then this, what you actually see here is not concrete, it's hollow. And so also the mistakes uh, get copied and it's, it's a copy and paste media critical work because this is how I also reflected how I, I am completely alien uh, to violence. And, and, and for me, this was about also about how I, I get to know about the conflict and the, uh, reading books and uh, watching uh, movies and, and reading the newspaper. And so this, this uh, repetition of destruction for me was a reflected filter. And from this work, I developed a series that is since 2010 ongoing. This is from 2012. It's called Gegenstück or Counterpart. This is real concrete and um, um, in fact, it looks as if it was broken completely uh, precise, but in fact, it's first I, I cast one, the, right, the one on the right, then I um, break 
a corner off, uh, make a mold of this, make a mold of the mold, and then I can cast the second one and pretend that it is one. So it's a very, it also reflects this uh, highly artificial uh, way of thinking uh, from the perspective of a Western uh, artist uh, who has no real experience uh, with the conflict. And after, after a while, I also started um, losing this uh, highly artificial attitude and developed work where I directly attacked the material because I started to, to want to dominate it, a material that usually dominates us. And um, I got into the into uh, knowing when when it can stand on its own and when I can push it so that it will still stay together. So this is my topic is the fracturing, taking revenge uh, to the material, taking the fight to it kind of. And um, yes, uh, maybe let's let's not go into too much detail and I know <laughs> what <to> Nicolas <laughs> <You're quite tough. laughs> um, so um, my artistic practice is actually pretty opposite in, in many ways. Um, that's also why we are cooperating. Um, we are using the terms dissection for, for what uh, Christoph is doing, while I'm mainly interested in, interested in entanglement, or uh, why the, the, the term we use for my approach is entanglement. Um, the, the core idea of many of my works is somehow um, if concrete and concrete is this incredible, I don't know, that's not, uh, <laughs> is this very, very often used material and, and obviously like the world which is surrounding us um, is, is um, somehow, it's not controlling what we're doing, but it's inflecting our decisions and our thinking. Um, so we can think about how concrete is actually um, our conflict, uh, our concrete is actually um, somehow getting into our minds and our bodies in a way. Um, so, and especially because in the beginning I said this comparison to water, like if we're talking about the second most often material in the world after water, um, like water stays liquid while concrete is liquid for a very short period of time and then it cures and then it stays like this. And in a way I would say it's a kind of petrification that we're actually experiencing it right now. Like I very much like the word petrification because it's, I mean, there's a lot of history to the word, um, but in the end I would say like it's just huge ideas um, about like the Charter of Athens, like society should work. And then they're really petrified into, into cities and to incredible amounts of stone um, and, Many of these ideas, or probably all of these ideas, won't last as long as these concrete structures, these petrified ideas, will last. Um, so, I, in, I, I started working with concrete and the human body by using my own body actually as a concrete mold. Like, I found out ways on forming my body and pouring concrete in and waiting for it to cure. Um, this picture you see now is from a, from a participatory um, sculpture. It was during an exhibition in Vienna. Um, so people like visitors of the exhibition were invited to, to form this mold together with the hands. It's, it's softer and I like the hands is okay. I did it also with bigger body parts. Um, and then we would uh, put very liquid concrete into it and then wait for, for it to cure. Um, and somehow there's this merging moment, like you would merge with the stone in a way. You, don't, you can't, can di can't differentiate which one is the stone and which one is your hands or the other people's hands. And yes, that's, that's the final, or that's the piece how it looked in the end. Um, and another piece, the last piece I will show you here is the, it's called Secondary Dolomitisierung. Um, 
and I've done it in, in Italy. That's me, obviously. Um, this is my my concrete suit, which I use when when making bigger bigger molds with my own body. Um, this was one was in the mountains, and and in the valley actually of Bolzano, uh, the mason, the stone mason. I got a beautiful kind of red marble stone, and the exhibition was on the top of the mountain. And I found out that there the the stone is actually. Um, the same material as the rock. Um, and if you know Bolzano, it's, it's an interesting, highly industrial city. It's in the north of Italy and still it's the hottest city in Italy because there's so much concrete there also. I mean, it's in the valley, but it's, everything is concrete. Um, so I decided to carry the, the stone up again, the mountain, and somehow like close the circle in some weird way and, and use, yeah, put it back to the mountain with, with concrete and my body and that's how it turned out to be yeah again it was like performance and sculpture um, Fantastic. Yeah. and i think now it's your turn <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. uh yes and christoph and uh, nicholas yes oh, we really? need to finish because uh, the time is over yeah. Yes, we're just uh, quickly, this is the first test, uh, this is the first collaboration we did. It's called Entangled Dissection. We let the stone drop from three meters height. And this is what we uh, conclude and what we are planning in the future. So we are teaming up with other artists, um, scientists and activists to develop new tools. We collect information, more information about negative impacts. Uh, we analyze how the industry greenwashes concrete as a sustainable building material. We search for other art pieces like Nina Canel's uh, Perpetuum Mobile, for example, which I absolutely adore this piece because it's just an open bag of dry cement, which is very, very thirsty for the water being uh, distributed by ultrasound motor. Yes, Nicolas, last. Yes. Yeah, I, I think we, I mean, the whole, the whole thing is that, I mean, concrete is there, concrete is used, and we think it is, uh, it is on us um, to, to develop strategies you know, of, re of radically rethink the use of this material. And since the industry won't help us with this, um, we think it's very important to team up artists, activists, and scientists to, yes, to radically question what is there and how we can bring up something new. Yeah. Thank you for Thank your you. Thanks for having us. And sorry if we took more time. Hey. Thank you.